Mike, I know you were a cop for 13 years. Now you're a defense lawyer. And I know you're an expert on the area of hit and run and, and hit and run law in California. And I want to ask you about that. But let me ask you, first of all, uh, if you're in an accident in California, uh, what are your duties? What is the law say you have to do afterwards? Well, here in California, we make a little distinction. Mm -hmm. If there's a traffic accident and there's property damage only, the requirements are one, either you can report it to the police or minimally exchange information with the other driver or the other property owner. Let's say, for example, you strike a fence. Mm -hmm. You got to get out, give the information to the property owner, have some way to identify it, and ultimately, if it's over $750 worth of damage, report it to the Department of Motor Vehicles. Well, what if the owner's not there? Let's say I scrape a car that's parked and I, I can't find the owner. I tell people all the time, reasonable efforts to leave the information necessary for you to be identified. Mm -hmm. For example, if, if that situation happened with me, I would leave my business card with my cell number on the door of the, of the property. And I wouldn't know I was involved in an accident, please call me. Mm -hmm. that, that's one of the simple ways to do that. Now it changes though, if in fact there's an injury. If someone mm -hmm. is hurt mm -hmm. in a traffic accident, your duties are much different. Not only do you have to stop, mm -hmm. but you have to render reasonable aid and then report it mm -hmm. to law enforcement. Mm -hmm. uh, let me ask you, Mike, is hit and run, is it, a, is it a, a misdemeanor or a felony in California? It actually could be both. For example, under a vehicle section 20,002, property damage only would be a misdemeanor. However, under Vehicle Code Section 20,001, if someone is injured and you leave the scene without identifying who you are, without rendering reasonable aid or, or staying around until the police arrive, you can be charged as a felony. And there's very severe ramifications. Even if you're charged with a misdemeanor, hit and run causing injury, a violation of 20,001, if you admit that allegation or are found guilty, the Department of Motor Vehicle will revoke your driver's license for a minimum of one year. What if you didn't realize there was damage? I mean, I, I've had calls from people who said there was a fender bender and they, they uh, I mean, it was sort of a loud street and they didn't realize that there was contact or damage, but later uh, so the police contacted them and said, well, somebody uh, reported you for hit and run and apparently you did cause damage. If you didn't know there was damage, can you still be charged with hit and run? Well. Y y you can be charged with hit and run if the DA believes you did know. Mm -hmm. But the bottom line is this, that's an absolute defense to that case. If in fact you reasonably didn't have the facts to believe that you actually struck another vehicle and you caused some property damage to someone, there's no requirement then to, to report it. You have to have, and it also goes on the totality of circumstances on a case like that. And there, there are case by case basis. And where we see often, at least here, in, at least in San Bernardino, is we have some ongoing construction of the 215 freeway where the lanes are narrowing and they have these K rails really impeding on the traffic. We recently had a case where someone was accused of side swiping another car. Our client really, really did not know that. The DA filed the case anyway based upon the CHP report. We were able to gather witness statements from other people in our client's car and we showed them to the DA. The DA believed those statements and that case was dismissed. Let me ask you, what if it's dangerous to stop? I mean, let's say you have an accident with someone and you're in sort of a bad neighborhood and this angry mob starts to gather around and, and uh, you feel that your safety would be threatened, that it's really not safe for you to stop right there at the scene and get out of the car. So you drive off somewhere and maybe contact the police, but you didn't stop right away. Is that a defense? Can you be prosecuted in that case? Th that is a defense. And, and actually, I tell my own daughter, who's now 26. If you're in an accident in an area that you're unfamiliar with or you're worried about, it's dark, you're out there alone, if your cell phone's not working, to leave that area, find the, the closest phone you can get to, mm. and then call the accident in. Mm. And, and, and that's, that's good advice for anybody. And, and that actually would lead to a defense. And we often have cases like that. Currently, we have a case up in the Victorville Courthouse where our, our client was driving down a lonely road late at night, struck something, she believed she struck a coyote. She continued on, she didn't have her cell phone with her, with her. she did not have her cell phone with her, stopped at a, the next available place, which was around 10 miles away, called her mom. Her mother said, don't worry about it, just come home, when you get home, we'll call the police. She drove another 30 miles to her house, about two hours go by, they called the police, the police said, don't worry about it, it's not our jurisdiction. And the next day, the CHP are investigating an accident when actually it wasn't a coyote, but it was a person. Mm -hmm. And in that case, they charged her with felony um, hit and run. 
and that case is currently in litigation. And our defense is exactly that she didn't know that she, anyone was injured. She didn't know that it was anyone was injured. It was reasonable to believe that she struck a coyote in this remote area in the mm -hmm. desert, mm -hmm. and that she did go home and report it. But mm -hmm. the police didn't want to take the report because she had left the jurisdiction from one agency to another. What about improving the crime? I mean, is it enough for the DA to show that it was my car in a hit and run, or do they have to show I was the driver? I mean, let's say my car is involved in a hit and run accident this morning, okay, and someone takes down the plate. It's very clearly my car, but no one sees who's driving, and they, they don't have any evidence that I was the one driving, and potentially someone else could have been driving my car. Is that enough for the DA to make their case? Or do, do they have to show I was the one actually behind the wheel? Well, certainly DAs make cases like we do building blocks, mm -hmm. just like we defend cases, knocking down the building blocks. And part of it is they can't just prove that the vehicle mm -hmm. was involved. They need to prove who the actual driver was. Mm -hmm. and, and in this day and age, unfortunately, for people that do exercise some poor judgment in that momentary minute of time, mm -hmm. there's lots of additional resources now for the DAs. And you know, we have these light cameras that take a picture of you three blocks away or or new vehicles have the black boxes in them they follow you and and and, and people who call on their cell phone and the police do a really great job modernly of tracking down people through these scientific means to find out right after the accident your phone was called your mother's number and it was from a cell site two blocks from the accident scene so there are ways for them absent an eyewitness saying yes that's the person who is driving modernly to try to put you behind the wheel of that car but at the end of the day, before they can convict me of hit and run, they have to prove I was the one driving. Absolutely. They have to be able to convince a jury of 12 people that not only was it your car involved in that accident, but you were the driver. Now, uh, let me ask you this. I, I get calls uh, periodically from people who uh, say, listen, I, I was contacted by the CHP, either on the phone or a voicemail or a letter, and says, you know, you're, you're a person of interest in a hit and run incident. We want, to come, we want to interview you. We need you to come down to the station. We need you to contact this detective. Should they go contact that detective on their own? Absolutely not. We handle many cases a year like this. And what we do is we'll open up this case for these folks, a, a, what we call in a pre-filing investigative case. And what we'll do is we'll independently investigate the accident with the attorney-client privilege. Mm -hmm. we'll, 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 we'll find out what's going on. We'll contact law enforcement mm -hmm. and find out where they are on the case, confirm some information, and eventually, while we'll tell the police our client will always be cooperative, the truth of the matter is this, it's a rare occasion that we'll allow someone to give a statement to police. Mm -hmm. it's, it's aberrational, it happens occasionally, um, everything's on a case-by-case -case basis, but for the most part, it's a rare occasion that we'll allow a client to speak to um, law enforcement in a situation like that. So absolutely don't call the police back, call your attorney and let your attorney handle it. Perfectly said. That's exactly what you should do. I'm Mike Scafitti, a retired police officer and now a criminal defense attorney with Shouse Law Group. If you or a loved one are in trouble and need help, call me, 877-777-7777.